so I just hit the record button and we are recording. Thank you again so much for coming to our session this evening. It should take about an hour. Um, as we just mentioned, I am recording the session, so if for some reason you need to pop out, there will be a recording available to you later. Uh, however, it is better to be in the session so that you can ask questions in chat or on microphone. Today, let's talk about our agenda. We're going to talk about primary and secondary sources because I understand that you are going to be required to use a lot of primary sources for this class. And you may have some lingering questions about what differentiates a primary from a secondary source. And when you start looking at the research, it can be really confusing for this class. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're also going to talk about searching in the library's resources. We have a search engine called Discovery, and by the end of the session, you're going to be experts. I will introduce you to the nursing specific databases, and then I will show you the subject guide for this course. So first things first, let's talk primary versus secondary sources. I kind of lump this into two groups, but I have a caveat after this slide that we're gonna look at a little bit more nuanced information. But typically when I'm talking about primary and secondary sources, a primary source is like a firsthand account. It's an eyewitness account. So someone who was um, at the place says in their original words, what happened. That's my humanities background explanation. For nursing, it can be a little bit different. What you're looking for is original research. So when you look at your articles, you want to make sure that this is not a literature review where someone has found a lot of existing research and then synthesized it together into something else. You're looking for research that um, the person has created an experiment and then gathered data. So a primary resource is something where the person has gathered data and they're presenting new data to you. It may be called an experiment or a randomized controlled trial. Those are really good buzzwords for you to look for to know that it's a primary source. You might also look for the phrase we measured because they are <laughs> measuring new data. A secondary source on the other hand is a secondhand account. It's a game of telephone. Uh, they might say that they observed through other uh, literature or research. You might see the word synthesis or that they have synthesized information. It may be called a review or a meta-analysis or a meta-synthesis. Those are buzzwords to look for to know that it's a secondary source. And you'll also notice that they draw conclusions from other data sources. Any questions about the differences here? And again, you can feel free to come off of mute or use the chat. All right, I don't see any questions. So here's my caveat. For this class, because you're um, going to be researching nursing theorists, things work a little bit differently. So you're not necessarily going to be looking for original research because sometimes your nursing theorists will write things that are not considered research, but that's still a primary source. So for context in this assignment, if you find something written by your theorist, it is a primary source. An article that cites the theory or the theorist is a secondary source. So if someone takes um, the theory of caring and they want to write an article that incorporates that, that's a secondary source, it's the game of telephone. But if you're looking at something that Kristen Swanson, who developed the theory of caring, wrote herself, that's a primary source. A book chapter that is not written by the theorist even if it's about the theory, is a secondary source. And a book chapter that is written by the theorist, whether or not it's about the theory, is a primary source. Does that make sense? All right, shy. So let me repeat that for you, Ashley. Uh, for the nursing theory assignment, if your resource was written by the theorist themselves, 
it's a primary source. If your resource was written by somebody else about the theory and they cite the theory, it is a secondary source, it's secondhand news. If an article was written by the theorist and you're reading the words of the theorist, it's a primary source. And oftentimes with these articles, the research articles, they're not written by one person. They might be written by 15 people, 15 authors are listed. But if your theorist is among them, it is a primary source. And I'll show you where to find that information as well. Angel, yes, a literature view is an example of a secondary source because what they've done is gathered a lot of different literature, a lot of different articles, and they're making something new out of what already exists. For a primary source, you're looking for them to conduct a brand new experiment. Anna says, so if there is a chapter written by the theorist, you cite the book and then the chapter. Um, citation <laughs> would go um, in the actual paper, your in-text citation would be for the whole book. And then on the last page, on the references page, you would also cite the whole book. Any other questions about primary versus secondary? This is a really important foundational piece for you guys. Because when you start searching and you have to kind of suss them out, it can be, it can be tough. Yes, a book chapter written by the theorist is a primary source. Anything the theorist has written themselves is a primary source. That also applies to interviews. So some of you may find interviews with the theorist. Um, that is also a primary source because you're getting the direct words from the theorist. In history classes, primary sources are considered things like letters or diary entries, um, resources from people who were at the place at the time. Um, so again, nursing is a little bit different, but it can help you to think of it in that context. You're looking for the original words of a person. Could there be an article that listed the theorist, but you couldn't tell what they wrote? Anna, yes. If the person is listed as an author, then it's technically a primary source for them. I've seen a lot of these theorists' primary resources where there are 15 authors listed and maybe your person is the 10th one listed, but that's still primary. All right, let's move along. We're gonna test your knowledge. So if everyone can see well, uh, what I'd like for you to do is either um, give a thumbs up if you think this article is primary or type secondary in the chat if you think it's secondary. All right, a lot of people are saying secondary. Tell me why you think it's secondary. Ah, Sandra has beaten me to it. Um, you said it mentions metasynthesis. The word metasynthesis means we've taken a lot of stuff and uh, written something about what's already been written. Someone else points out that it says the articles were reviewed. Yes, that is a huge clue as well. The metasynthesis word is a huge clue as well. This is a secondary source. Good job, y'all. Let's try it again. Here is another article. If you think it is primary, give me a thumbs up. And if you think it is secondary, type secondary in the chat. This is called Influencing Factors on Nursing Students Learning Flow During the COVID-19 Pandemic, a mis Mixed Method Research. For those saying primary, what do we think makes this a primary source? It talks about a study and how it was done. Original data collection, it's a trial. Yeah, they collected data and analyze it. The authors are presenting their experience. Data analysis, quantitative data measured, result of a study done. All of you are correct. Yes, um, this is a primary source for all of the reasons that you just mentioned. They gathered their own data and conducted their own experiment.
Here's another one. An interaction model of client health behavior, theoretical prescription for nursing. This is a book chapter. And I don't know if you can tell, it is written by someone named Cheryl Cox. Ooh, everybody's quick on this one. Primary, primary, primary. Why? You know, the follow-up is always why. She is an actual theorist. It was written by a theorist, written by the author himself. That's exactly right. So Cheryl Cox is one of your nursing theorists. And these are Cheryl's words. And so for this class, it is considered a primary source because you are writing about a theorist. Now, in another class, this is where things get murky. In another class where you're not looking for a specific person, this would be a secondary source. And if it were written by someone else and mentioned Cheryl, it would be a secondary source. But because you're studying nursing theorists and you'll have a specific theorist that you're looking for their original words, this is a primary source. You guys did really, really well. I'm impressed. All right, then let's move on. It's time to meet discovery. <laughs> oh, Ashley says, if we use a different theorist to discuss our own, that's a secondary source. Yes. If your theorist is not one of the authors uh, and another theorist has written something about your theorist, that is a secondary source. Good question. Let's just love the little gray areas. <laughs> All right, time to meet Discovery. So Discovery is the name of a search engine that we in the library use that searches across all of the library's databases, or almost all. So a lot of you may use the word database frequently. You might say, I searched the library's database. Uh, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of a foundation of vocabulary here about what we're talking about when we talk about databases, or when I say discovery, or even an article. So what you see is a model that I created that kind of explains how the library is built in layers. So at the very center of the circle, you see an article and that's what you're after, right? That's that foundational piece. That's what you need. That's what you're searching for. Well, articles are contained in journals and journals typically are very, very specific. They deal with one subject, maybe one particular part of a subject. Um, and they come out periodically like a magazine. So there might be one to four of them a year. Journals are housed in databases. Databases are a little bit broader. They're typically one discipline. So for you guys, it might be medical or health professions databases. And that will contain thousands and thousands of journals. So we're up to like hundreds of thousands of items in a database. Whereas an article is a singular thing. A journal might have 10 articles in it at a time. A database has thousands of journals. So when you talk about CINAHL, the database that I'm sure you're familiar with, that is a repository for thousands of journals. And what is included in CINAHL might be different from what you find in Medline. And so that's why we have multiple different databases for you to search in because they have different journals in them. But that outermost ring, Discovery, houses almost all of them. And so when you're first starting out in, in a program, and especially in a class like this, we recommend that you start as broad as possible with your search and cast the widest net because you're more likely to catch things with a big net. So I'm going to teach you about how to use discovery today because I think it will serve you best. So with that being said, welcome to the library's website. <laughs> this is maryville.edu slash library and please let me know um, if you can still see my screen. I pulled something out from another monitor. While you let me know that, Ashley, no, discovery is not specific to nursing only. Uh, it houses almost all of the library's databases, so it will contain 
results about English literature and history and chemistry and psychology and almost everything. But by the time we get done today, I will teach you how to pare things down so that you're only seeing nursing results. Thank you so much for the confirmation that you can still see. All right, there are a lot of options on this homepage, but what I want you to look for is this search bar. And the search bar is like Amazon to you. This is where we're gonna find the things that we're shopping for. But instead of starting to type keywords just in this bar and hitting search, I want you to click on advanced search. Since you're in a graduate program, we're gonna start here. This brings up a slightly different looking menu, but what you need to know is that these search bars at the top are where you're going to put your keywords. Now, unlike Google, um, the library's resources can't really be searched if you type in a full sentence. So your first job is to pare down your topic into the minimal keywords that you need to get your point across. And that can take time. And it's hard at first, especially for people who maybe haven't done this in a while or haven't ever done it at all, to figure out what those keywords need to be. But you have to remember as you start this that research is a treasure hunt. And you're going to dig a lot of holes <laughs> before you find the treasure that you're looking for. So don't get discouraged if you start typing things in and that you're not getting the results that you want. Because that just means you, need, you get to try something new. So from here, uh, what I recommend is that you split your keywords across these lines. And you'll notice that each line starts with an and. What this and does is it tells the data or the search engine rather, not the database, the search engine that you want every keyword that you include to be included in the results. So let's say I'm looking for articles about or by Kristen Swanson. And then on the second line, I would say theory of caring. And then I just click search and we'll see what happens. You can see that I got over 3000 results from that search. You'll also notice that in the results, my keywords are bolded where they're applicable. So you see in this case, this article is by Kristen Swanson. This one is also by Kristen Swanson, but there may be other articles that just talk about Kristen Swanson. Additionally, we're not only getting scholarly articles in the results. You see this one is labeled as news and this one is labeled as an ebook. If you're looking specifically for scholarly articles, the first time that you search, before you do anything else, you won't just be getting those kinds of scholarly results. There are things that we have to do. So let me introduce you to the filters on the left side of the screen. And this is why I say discovery searching is like Amazon, because we're all familiar with getting on Amazon and buying a thing. But before we get there, we use the filters on the left side to say, well, it has to be prime shipping because I want it now. And I want something with four star reviews and up, and I need it to meet these parameters. Discovery does exactly the same thing, just with different context. So we want articles about Kristen Swanson and the theory of caring. But over here, we see we, that we know we need peer-reviewed articles. A peer review is a process that uh, scholarly articles go through where an expert writes an article, they send it to a journal to be published, but instead of that journal just publishing it, they send it out blindly to other experts to review before they publish it. And this is like the gold standard of research. So frequently throughout your program, you're gonna find yourself clicking this checkbox. So we started with 3,200 results. Now we have 580. That eliminated all of the eBooks, the news articles, any videos that may have been in there. Anything that did not come out of a scholarly journal is now gone. That's a good place to start. For you, 
uh, the publication date filter might be key. Now, depending on when your nursing theorist lived or created their theory, you might want to adjust these dates uh, to be relevant to that time period. Now, typically in the medical field, if you were in a different class, you would want this to be within the last five to 10 years. So you can adjust the slider or click in the boxes to adjust the year range. I'm gonna leave this as is because it is a nursing theorist, but please know that that filter will be your best friend <laughs> one day. Additionally, the subject filter. This can be a little bit tricky, uh, but it will also be very helpful to you. If you click on subject and then click show more, it will list out uh, subject headings for all of the articles and results that you're seeing in discovery. This works like a hashtag on social media. So you know how on Instagram, you can type in hashtag and then a thing, and it will catalog that post with other posts that are hashtagged the same way. This is the equivalent in the, in the library world. So what you're looking for in the subject filter menu is the subject term that you think best fits what you're looking for. Now, I know I need the theory of caring and the first word here is caring. Oh, I'm so glad, Angel. I thought about that one for a long time because this is the trickiest one to me. So if I click on the, the caring subject filter and hit update, uh, we just had 300 some results and now we're down to 68. And that is so much easier for you to go through individually than if you had 100,000 different results in your search. So make good use of that. And if you find um, multiple subject filters, you can actually go back click it again, hit show more, and then choose another. But I do suggest that you do only one at a time. That pairs things down uh, in a manageable way rather than paring it down to five results from the get-go and maybe you've lost something that would have been good to have. So one subject filter at a time. I'd also like to point out the language and geography filters for you that may come in handy later. However, not all articles are tagged for language. So you may, if you limit to only English, you may lose some English articles that just didn't have the English tag on them. Um, so use that sparingly, but then also geography. Uh, these are also kind of rare tags, but if you find yourself with just too many results and you really need your research to deal with a specific population, this can be a good filter to go to as well. Any questions about these filters? Again, it's your Amazon four stars, prime shipping. This is how you get to what you really, really want. You are so welcome. I'll also point out the full text filter here. What that does is pairs down to only the e-resources that the library has access to, because you will find results in here that we don't have a subscription to. But at this level, um, here's, here's a good example. At this level, you may see an article with an abstract that just speaks to you. It's perfect for your paper, um, but we don't have access, but we can get it. So if you see something like that, underneath you'll see request through interlibrary loan. You'll just click on that, sign in a hundred times a day. Um, and then it will bring you to a page that looks like this. It's already filled out all the information about that article that you'd like to request. And all you have to do is hit submit. We get it in a system on our end and we'll borrow it from another library for you. That typically takes two to 14 days, um, which I know is a long window, but our staff get the request out to other libraries within a day. And then we wait to see what other libraries will do. So that's why there is such a long window. Good question, Ashley. You will have access to those articles indefinitely. You'll be sent a PDF.
forever is always a good answer. <laughs> Sweet. Yes. All right. So let's say you find exactly what you want. This looks very promising. You'll click on the title and it will bring you to a landing page. A lot of people blow right past this page, but everything you need to cite the article is on this page. So don't blow past it because once you're, <laughs> you're going back and you're like, how do I cite this in APA? This is the answer. This page has everything that you need to plug into that formula. Additionally, if you want to save this article, and this might be the most important thing that I tell you tonight, if you want to save this article, you cannot use the link up here in the browser bar. That is a temporary link. Why they do this, I don't know. We're working on changing it as a library field. But for now, this link will break after eight hours. So if you save it tonight and come back to it tomorrow, it won't bring you back. Instead, you have to click this button on the right side that says permalink. When you click on that, you see that it generated a link right here where it says permalink in big letters. This is the link that you want to save somewhere, whether that's in a Word document or an email or wherever you'd like to keep that. This is the link that will bring you back to this page every time. I can't tell you how many people have been devastated <laughs> when they realized they didn't grab the permalink. So definitely do that. When you're looking for research in any class, not just this one, um, knowing whether or not you have the right article is a matter of whether or not it can open three doors for you. And the first door is, do I like the title? Sometimes I think academics really just like to hear themselves talk. And so they'll make the title as difficult as possible to parse through. So if you don't like the title, move on. We don't have time for that kind of negativity here. The second door is, do I like the abstract? So when you hit this landing page and scroll down a little bit, you can read the abstract on this page. It's typically about a paragraph. It won't take you very long. And that will tell you everything you need to know about whether or not this is the article for you. If you like the abstract, then we move on. And on the left side of the page, we look for something that says full text. There are a lot of different ways that this can link out. My favorite is PDF. It looks the nicest, but you might see something that says HTML or it might say view full text somewhere else. What you're looking for is full text. So if you click on one of those links for the 17th time today, you will sign in and then it will pull up the article. The third door is reading through the article. And at that point, you'll know whether or not this is good for you. Ashley, that is a really good question. Give me about 30 seconds and I'll be back there. And I will show you again. At this point, if you are on a PDF full text article, you can also save this to your computer by hitting the save button right here. Or you can hit the print and you can make yourself a print copy. There's also a permalink button on this page. It's teeny tiny. <laughs> Over here on the right side, it's a tiny little link button. But you see when I click that, it generated a new permalink. This permalink will bring you back to this page. I always suggest though, that you permalink this landing page because you have all of the citation information that you could need. Any questions about accessing an article? Erica says, oh, that would be so sad. It is sad. I have done it. <laughs> Not using the permalink. All right, 
So Ashley, to answer your question. So here's our search results page. Instead of clicking full text right here, we click on the, the article title instead. And we, when we click on the title link, it brings us to the landing page. Yes, the permalink is located over here on the right hand side. So my mouse is over here. If you look under tools and go almost all the way to the bottom, it says permalink. And then that link shows up right over the title here. <clears throat> you are so welcome. Okay, let's move on a little bit uh, to look at some more advanced things. So I'm gonna hit advanced search again to pull up a fresh menu. And you see that I still have Kristen Swanson and Theory of Caring listed here. But there are other operators on this dropdown. It doesn't have to be and. So other than and, we have or and not as options. So let's talk about those real quick because this also confuses people sometimes. So we already talked about and. And adds conditions to the search. My search needs results that have the terms depression and pets or BMI and heart disease, Swanson, Kristen, and theory of caring. The results have to have both. Not and or work a little bit differently. Not eliminates options from the search. So uh, I'm searching for chocolate desserts, but I don't want cake. I would say chocolate, not cake. Or let's say I'm searching for something about Teddy Roosevelt. I might type in Roosevelt, not Franklin, not Eleanor. <laughs> I also noticed that one of your theorists, um, Dr. Choi, when you search for Dr. Choi, you get a lot of engineering results because there's more than one Dr. Choi. So in this case, I might say Choi Hisong, not engineering. And that eliminates options from the search results. Or on the other hand, broadens your search. So it says, okay, I'd like options here. I will take anything with heart attack or cardiac infarction. I'll take cancer or neoplasm because sometimes our authors use different vocabulary to mean the same thing. Does that make sense? It's all about thinking like a thesaurus <laughs> when you use the or. All right, excellent. So we see in our advanced search menu, when we hit the drop down, the default is and because that's the one you're going to use the most, but occasionally you might need or or not. And those are available to you here. You can select them. And I'm going to put that back to and. I want to show you uh, one more thing. Sometimes when you search for the author's name and just leave it be, you'll get exactly what you need. And sometimes you won't. So rather than doing first name, last name, Try doing last name, comma, first name. Because more often they're cataloged this way, last name, comma, first name. Additionally, on the right-hand side, there are other filters. So rather than searching for Swanson Kristen as just a keyword, let's hit this drop down and select author instead. Now what we're doing is we're telling the search engine, I want results from the author, Kristen Swanson. That's a good way to get primary sources. Additionally, you don't always have to say theory of in your results. You can pull keywords out of the theory name itself because some of those theory names are really long, y'all. So I might even shorten this to just say caring. So now what we've done is we've changed the parameters a little bit. We're saying Swanson comma Kristen instead of Kristen Swanson. We're running an author search 
instead of a keyword search. We're using an AND to tell the search engine we need both of these terms. And we've shortened up our theory name as well to just caring. I'm going to hit search. I think the first search that we ran was like 3,000 results before we started filtering. And now you see our results are down to 76. You could go without filtering on this and look at all of the titles at least. Does everybody feel comfortable with using this author drop down? Some of you have nursing theorists that are like really common names. That could happen. So one thing that I want you to look for is to make sure that the author, Cheryl Cox is a really good example. Let's use uh, Cheryl. Let's use Cheryl in just a second. Um, one more thing that I wanna point out is that sometimes your authors will not go by their full name when they publish. Kristen is notorious for this. She goes by K.M. Swanson. So in your author list, which is at the front of every citation under these um, titles, you might see Swanson, comma, Kristen. In this case, it's Swanson K. In other cases, it will be Swanson KM. In this case, it's Swanson Kristen M. So be observant as you go through and you might wanna swap things up. See, there's Swanson KM. And you could search for Swanson KM instead and you might get different results. So just be flexible. Uh, try to notice things as you go. Take notes if you need to about how you're changing things up. Um, but yeah, notice if your person goes by their full name or if they go by um, a pen name or something different. Let's try Cheryl Cox real quick because that is a good example of someone who has a common-ish name. So just by running an author search for Cheryl Cox, we got over a thousand results. Do we think that this Cheryl Cox, our Cheryl Cox, <laughs> the nursing theorist, also happened to write an article about the wedding in ancient Athens by John Oakley? Probably not. Probably not. So that is where your subject filter is going to come in really, really handy. We've run an author search for Cheryl Cox. Now, if we go down to subject, hit show more, we can start filtering down by the subject terms that really matter to us. And that should eliminate all of the other things um, that don't apply to us. Any questions about using discovery? Once you get in there and start, it gets really, really easy. It'll be second nature to you pretty soon, but starting out can be tough. I totally understand that <laughs> it's tough. It just takes practice. I'm going to keep watching for questions. So if you have them, please continue typing them. What I also encourage you to do is start mixing and matching. Like consider this a buffet, a search buffet. And I want you to try a lot of different things. So you might try Kristen Swanson or Swanson comma Kristen. You might use her as a keyword search. That'll turn up probably secondary sources. Um, you said metasynthesis means secondary. Yes, Angel, every time. Every time a secondary source, unless your theorist wrote it. Gray areas. <laughs> um, so you might try Swanson, comma, Kristen, or you might try Kristen Swanson as a keyword. Uh, you might try a theory of caring with an and, and you might say not college students because a lot of the results that you're going to find for Kristen Swanson are about college students. And if that's not what you're interested in, you might need to use a not. Um, additionally, the last one, 
story theory. I can't tell you how much literature stuff there is that uses the term story theory. So you're going to need to use multiple ands, maybe an or, a not here and there. You can use more than one line, more than one operator, and or or not, to get your point across. So don't be afraid to make a huge sandwich <laughs> at the buffet when it comes to making your search terms. And again, if you use advanced search and you want to make something like this, you don't have to type it all in one line. You can break it up across these different lines. And if you need to add more lines, there's a plus button and you can add more lines. <laughs> can have as many as you need. I think the longest one I ever did was about five. And that was really specific. So do what you need to do. Okay, so that is discovery. And like I said, discovery holds all of our databases in it and it will cast the widest net. But sometimes um, you will need to get more specific not even necessarily for this class, but later on if I don't get to see you again. I want you to know how to find some extra things in the library. So if you want to go straight to the nursing databases, here's how you do that. From the library's homepage, scroll down until you see resources and hover over it. And then go to the link that says databases. This will show you a list of all of the library's databases. That's not just nursing, that's everything. So if you want to look at just the nursing databases, then you'll click on this drop down that says all subjects. And this lists all of the disciplines that our databases are categorized into. So you'll find nursing right here. And now these resources are specifically for you. For this class, CINAHL Ultimate, Medline, I absolutely will, Angel. CINAHL Ultimate, Medline, and then if you scroll down, Ov Ovid Nursing Collections are your best bets. There are a lot of other resources here that are fantastic. They're just not what you need for this course. There's some really excellent point of care tools here, uh, anatomical models, all kinds of cool stuff. That's not what you need. You need CINAHL, <laughs> Medline, and Ovid. Angel, one more time, I'll show you. From the library's homepage, scroll down until you see resources on the bar, hover, and then go down to databases. Tawanda, yes, I will. Or if one of your classmates wants to do that, that would be really helpful. Hover over the resources and then click databases. This lists everything in alphabetical order. So if you know the name of the database you want, you can just go to that letter or you can click on all subjects and then scroll down to nursing. And then ta-da. So I said CINAHL, Ultimate, Medline, and Ovid are your best friends. I'm actually going to open CINAHL because I have good news. All of the skills that we just learned in Discovery, uh, this works the same way. If we click on Advanced Search, we're at almost in exactly the same screen. Everything works the same way from here. One thing that CINAHL does really well that Discovery doesn't because it knows that this is medical research is that all of these search options down here are specific to the medical field and you can look for a research article. This will help you pare down to only primary resources or there is a checkbox for randomized controlled trials. This can also help you pare down and not see the metasynthesis articles or the meta-analysis articles. Uh, because those are very easy to find and get hung up on. So play with these. It should help. 
But yes, for Sentinel and Medline, uh, the searching works exactly the same way. So that's the good news of the day. You don't have to learn a new skill set. One more thing I wanted to share with you, and just in case you're taking screenshots, there's your screenshot of the day. <laughs> there's your suggested databases. One more thing I wanted to share with you is um, additional good news. Uh, the library has created a research guide for this course. And a research guide is just a little website where we have compiled information and links and suggestions for you. And that subject guide, that research guide, I can't take credit for. Um, that's been years in the making, but it has helped a lot of students in this class. A lot. So I would strongly encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, to get to that, uh, you can go to resources and then subject guides. So instead of clicking databases, we're going to click subject guides. And this brings you to a list of subjects. So you're going to scroll down until you find nursing. And these are the different subject guides that we have for nursing right now. And you'll click on nursing theorists. From here, you can see on the left side of the screen, there's information about how to find articles, how to find books, more information about primary sources, if you're having trouble kind of sorting those things out. And then we have individual pages for your theorists. So let's say you're using Cheryl Cox, that is your theorist. We have some resources here to get you started. We don't give you everything, but this will get you started. I'm also going to put the link to this guide in the chat. I feel like I just heard a sigh of relief all the way in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> yeah, this guide is incredible. And like I said, I can't take credit for it, but I can pretend. <laughs> Please use this guide. Uh, it will be really useful to you. If you still find yourself struggling uh, to find the things that you need or um, to parse through the things that you have found, you can always ask for help as well. The library is here for you. There are lots of different ways to get in touch with us. Uh, our first line of defense is a 24-7 chat line. It is uh, manned or personed by librarians who have access to all of our resources. And to get to that, you just click the Ask a Librarian tab on our website. That brings up a chat box. Ask your question right here and someone will be with you within just a few seconds. And that's any time of day. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's 2 a.m. because that's when you can get to things. They'll be there. If you'd like to meet with me or my colleague, Paul, uh, we are the reference team right now in Maryville Library. Uh, you can scroll down until you see Ask a Librarian and then click Help. And then on this page, there are lots of different options for you. You could schedule a Zoom appointment with one of us. Uh, we'll meet with you to search for things or talk you through stuff. There's another link to 24-7 chat. Or you can email us, call, text, call me, beat me if you want to reach me, um, whatever works for you. So don't hesitate to use this either. I'm also going to put this link in the chat. Thank you, Marie. I feel better. <laughs> Um, yeah, that is, that is the information that I have for you today. Like I said, if you have questions, use those link, uh, the link that I put in the chat to reach out to us, or you can email reference at maryville.edu. Everyone in the library gets your email. So someone will answer you. <laughs>